I'm an unusually low energy Connor because I've just been fucking morally crushed by this week. Uh, but I'm gonna stick it out for the show. Yeah, we're talking news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy, but my fucking hospital cat is sick and it's really upsetting me. So, yeah, um, I think by proxy, it's actually upsetting a couple other people. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, most of your work stories are just ruined my day. Um, yes. The one thing I will say this: I will say this. When I came back from my three day weekend, and for those who don't know, uh, our hospital cat Sally that I've talked about in the show is in uh, renal failure. Um, and she's on day seven of being an IV pump, and we're trying to just pump all this fucking garbage out of her system. She's doing better, but then, like, today, she doesn't want to eat. Uh, but she was also a cat, and cats do well in open environments, not in cages. They fucking hate it. Um, but I guess my entire three-day weekend, all she did was sit in the cage, put her face into a blanket, and sulk. Um and uh, I heard later on that my boss uh, didn't want to make any decisions about what they're going to do with her until A, uh, uh, they we ran blood work on her again, and B, until I got to the hospital because he wanted to see if my presence was going to do anything to help her with treatment, and apparently it fucking did. Uh, so that's some uplifting shit for everybody, is that that cat literally didn't want to get better until I showed my face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and now she's just angry at you that she's now in this situation. Now she's so fucking yeah. mad at me. It's not even funny. Um, yeah. I try to help her eat, and she well, so normally she eats off my hand. That's just what happens. Like that's when I don't when I can't get her to eat, I offer to her on my fingertips, and she gobbles it down. Now I got I she gets, takes like one bite and goes ma. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cat. She's That's fucking old. All right, everybody. She's old and she's yeah. fat and she's over it. Like, and I'm over it. I don't like seeing her in this fucking cage attached to a pump because she's miserable. And today she decided it was day at the beach for Sally and catapulted her litter box across the fucking thing twice. Um, and at some point I look over and she's just got litter and like one little piece of poop on top of her head. And like, all I hear is crash. And I look over and she's a mess and she goes, Mow! <laughs> is she a member of the northern korean army <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could get her her meows her vocalizations on on camera at some point because she doesn't meow like a cat she meows like like an old lady who can't get up is yeah. the best way i can describe it but um yeah who else is here for this um this surprisingly eventful news uh episode where some shit happened that i wasn't ready for <laughs> Yeah. Uh Arlen Haro, as usual. Uh in the coveted third spot because Tallboy's second heart couldn't pump enough blood to keep it awake. Uh I'm Eric Sorte. Oh, he would appreciate that so much. <laughs> and uh, I can't compete with your intros, Eric, so I'm Lou Gonzalez. <laughs> I was I was expecting something kind of along the normal lines of like yeah he, the oxygen around his head got thin and he passed out in his bed. Um, well, no, he works like a brontosaurus. He needs to have a secondary <laughs> heart and brain. <laughs> to, uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Except in Hunter's exactly. case, it would be the guy playing it on like the uh, kazoo or whatever. <laughs> <instrument it was. laughs> All right, see, my brain went to like a girl who tries to touch him, and she mm. he just sneezes in her face. <laughs> now I'm kind of like now I'm just picturing him like going to his fridge and like he like has to for some reason like lifts one leg to get something and then like puts it down and the whole fucking house shakes like <laughs> and like his dad walks up and he's like my dear Dr. Sattler I just see him putting his head in welcome to Davenport like... Park <laughs> he's just eating like celery out of the <laughs> Single leaf hanging out the side of yeah. his mouth while he chews. So is the is the, the horrifying uh, un, is the horrifying unnecessary sequel going to involve him like running into water on fire or something? Yeah, I didn't see <clears throat> Jurassic World two. Everybody, fuck the first movie. I don't give a shit about the second movie. Um, and I don't care if you like it; it sucks. <laughs> yeah, me and Connor already died on this hill. You think they we mean, won't die? I, I, I talked. I talked about this with me uh, with uh, Joe and Sean, and they were like. <laughs> Hold on, I thought lots of people didn't like Jurassic Girl. What do you mean people got mad at you? I was like, people got mad at us. 
was for, it before it actually came out or after? I can't. It was remember. after because you, I, I, and here's the fucked up thing. It was my friends who came after me for a post that I shared from you, and they were like, "Why are you so cynical?" Ah, it was so like, weird. It was so, so and like strange. it got to the point where I'm sending text messages like, "What is your deal?" Like, <laughs> um. Uh. That movie's stupid, all right? And I'm not going to hear anybody else's opinion on it because I'm fucking over it. But uh, I refuse to see yeah. the second one. So, um, But as far as movies go, um, movies I do want to see, Shazam 2 was announced for coming out next year. I thought it was 2022. 2022, yes. Oh, you have 2020 in the release, in the chat. Is that what I have, 2020? Yeah. Well, it should be 2022. Um, <laughs> the Warner Brothers DC movie that I believe will actually exist and come out. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah here's the thing oh, that's right here's the thing. that was announced also I forgot. here's the thing yeah, yeah. The, the sequels to those the, the movies that will come out are all sequels to movies that came out that got that got good to great responses mm-hmm. so yeah of course shazam's getting a sequel of course wonder woman's getting a sequel i'm sure aquaman's getting a sequel um uh yeah i was more referencing the flash's date getting moved like, yeah, yeah they yeah <sighs> They announced it to, for 2022. I should have put that on the list because that's not happening. No, it's <laughs> it's not. not happening. <laughs> at this uh, point, at this point, the show has been going on for so long. At this point, like I can't believe I'm saying that. Like the show has existed for six seasons, not quite mm-hmm. six years because th- their seasons are so they overlap as far as years go. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But, <laughs> <laughs> we've gotten like what seven speedsters There's on the show that never. Yeah, like they're I'm but like. The Flash TV universe is more robust and more developed and more fleshed out than a single movie or two movies could ever be at this point. And, like, Mm -hmm. the weight and the teases have been so few and far between. I don't give a shit anymore. Whatever. And they were like, Andy Gushier is going to make The Flash. I'm like, that's awesome. And then no news. They're like, it's coming out in 2022. I'm like, the fuck it is. Listen, they've they've really got to hammer out that script with Joe the Nuclear Guy. (laughs) <laughs> and his garbage truck driving adventures. So, I mean, I hope he does come back. Um, oh God, no! Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I was don't it, know. What didn't? What's his name? Ezra Miller say like, "Oh, I'm trying to talk to Grant Morrison to write a script." Wasn't that like? Yes, yeah, that, that, that was that was a thing. That was yeah. the first time I think it was announced to be canceled, and Ezra Miller was mm-hmm. like, "No, it's." I'm gonna. We're gonna work on this script together, and we're gonna make this movie happen. And then crickets. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Like he, if you watch him in interviews and stuff, like he really likes that character and took the dive into the character. Like he's read a bunch of comics and he has everything. Like one of my favorite moments with him was I think he was at some comic con and he invited a bunch of people on stage and some guy ran up as Thawne and Ezra started to fake punch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, and he gets super nerdy about it, and I like, kind of like him as Barry. Although, like, I don't understand why, why, oh, why can we not get a fucking blonde Barry Allen? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like. It's so weird that that's like you picked Ezra Miller, who is this weird. I don't know what ethnicity or heritage he is. He's a, a certainly a mix of stuff. Um, and Grant Gustin is this string bean with brown hair who uh, is incredibly charming, but not very threatening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. But, I think uh, they're trying to play it safe. I think they, they don't want to have mm-hmm. introduce white blonde man with blue eyes to play the superhero in this movie. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's what he is. <laughs> it, it, he is. He is. But I mean, out of, out of all the characters, like... He's the one that's, I think, the most malleable for an origin, or at least the way he looks. Like, yeah, yeah, most no, people, if you, I don't think if you have a flash, nobody's gonna be in an upper of them being something. And honestly, I think a lot of people, because there was a generation, like, it's weird to say that for a lot of people, Wally West is their flash. It's not, uh, actually, yeah. it's not yeah. weird as we're like well, reading Crisis well, no, 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 no. Show. Barry well, no, died in 1987. Yeah, well, it's yeah. weird to say it's weird because now we're an age where like fucking Nightwing got a bullet to the head. Now he's Rick, uh, and you know it, it, we have a CEO who fucking hates sidekicks and treated and has treated Wally West 
like his own personal punching bag uh, for the last like two years and has done awful things to that character. It's weird to think that for like 20 years, that character was the Flash. Like yeah. the, he, that's, Barry, Barry Allen's not in the Justice League cartoon. It's Wally. No, that's Wally West. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Voiced by the Lex Luthor of Smallville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, yeah, no, Wally damn it. Wally was the first Flash. Like, exactly. I knew who Barry <laughs> Allen was, but like when I was starting to read comics, like Wally West was, was perfectly fine with it. I was honestly, yeah. after having read Crisis, I was like, very that much. You're kind of antiquated. The funny thing is, like, Crisis was the first big comic book, like the big, like the first big book I ever read. Um, mm. So Barry was li- quite literally my first Flash, and the first my first Flash died the first book I read with him in it. <laughs> yeah, but in that book specifically, like he's a little bitch. Yes. Like, <laughs> and I say this because we're reading it on the comic show, but like he's not. He does not come off well in that book. And he dies like a fart fading into the wind. He dies running around a gun, doesn't he? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I just fucking reduced his death and just nothing. Like, um, it's the, and it's the issue after the Supergirl death that is like so tragic. And she dies so awesomely. And Barry just kind of dies on his own. Like, she no dies other fighting around. the anti-monitor, doesn't she? Yeah, one-on-one. Yeah. 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 You know what's funny is that uh, Mighty Mousette dies the exact same way in that Mighty Mouse uh, comic I've mentioned in the show. She <laughs> dies fighting the anti Minotaur. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! And then oh. the cover, the cover of the issue where she dies has like it's Mighty Mouse holding her, and in the background is like Woody Woodpecker and like a bunch of other Hanna Barbera cartoons all being sad. I gotta find the fucking comic book cover. Oh, yeah, for you, your information, yeah, though, I looked it up. Ezra Miller's Dutch, German, and Jewish, and he's from Len- oh, uh, Wyckoff, New Jersey. Yeah. What? Yeah. Huh. Um, he, he looks like he's got, like, he honestly looks like he has some, some Asian blood in there or something, like something. Um, a yeah. bit more he exotic, has a but... Keanu Reeves y thing going yes, on. Yes, where you're like, you could be Asian. Well, well I think this is half is Japanese. Part. Yeah, I only re- I, I remember this because of who said it, but uh, Andy Andy Seitz, um, friend of the show, uh, person who cursed us forever, um, <laughs> he looked into it, and apparently there's sort of a connection between Asian heritage and Ashkenazi Jews. Um, okay. Whoa. Okay. Because well, everyone of kind the of moved Silk around. Road, yeah, basically, and yeah, so basically that was the. That was the way in which those two things connect. Uh, the Silk Road, it's also the Mongols just running and raping and killing everything. Mm-hmm. Yes, the and Mongols just destroying Eastern Europe. Yeah, because right. well, isn't that, isn't that, 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 that one piece of information is like if you put ten, like, ten people in a room, there's a good chance that like five yeah, of them are related to... It's yes. one in ten, like, because they can only trace it with men. It's like one in ten Mongolians today... Our direct descendants of Genghis Khan, or Genghis yeah. Khan, right? Which probably includes me. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, why can you call them Genghis? That's the correct pronunciation. I know. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because um, I like I like awful, awful, cheesy, um, gimmicky disco. And oh god, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know god. exactly where you're going with this. <laughs> I don't. Oh, you, oh I do you not know fucking, about this, Lou? I have a fucking no. treat for you after the show. There's this set. There's this. Who I think their group name is Genghis Khan, isn't it? Yes, they're, I believe the band was actually Mongolian. I'm not. I'm not going to commit. to I think that. they have one Mongolian in the group, and everybody else is German or or like uh, or French or Swedish. Um, but they have a song called Genghis uh, Genghis Khan. And it's a fucking upbeat super seventy disco dance song about yeah. a man who slaughtered and raped his way across the world. Yes, they're West German because they're they're pronouncing it in a sort Chinggis. of German. Yeah, it's Chinggis yeah. Khan. Ch- yeah, um, that's the other way to say is Chinggis. Yeah. Um, See, I th- and Lou, I thought you were pronouncing it that way just because you're making a play on the old uh, the old joke. Is it GIF or GIF? Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. it's like oh. there's a bunch of those words now because um, it's not 
Neanderthal, or it's not Neander, Neanderthal, it's Neanderthal. Yeah, yes, and uh, Neanderthal. the Himalayas are the Himalayas. And, uh, mm. Right. So, what? The yeah. what? Say it again? Himalayas are the Himalayas. It's basically, yeah. instead of people being like, oh, maybe you shouldn't say these words that aren't English in this very anglicized way, saying them more yeah. like the people say them. Yeah. Right. So, so in a way that's respectful of those people and their cultures. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, <laughs> All right. Which reminds me. Don't forget it. We're just, Connor, I found, it. I found it right now. Says, yeah. I was going to say it reminds oh, me. Oh, damn it. Arlen, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shazam 2 comes out in 2022. Um, and uh, I'm very excited for that because Shazam is mm-hmm. like – a really surprisingly good movie that has a third act that mm. I was not expecting at all. No, I, I was in the not theater. Not. I was like, are they going there? Are they doing this? Oh shit, they're doing this. It was something oh I God. expected to happen like two films later that they went right. all in with. Probably because they were like, we don't know if we're going to get two or three movies. Oh later. yeah, and the, the, exactly. the two the hidden gems of like who some of the kids end up becoming is so yeah. awesome. Oh so wait, so yeah. you've all seen it, right? Uh, I haven't yet, but I already know what the big okay. twist that you guys are talking so, about is along with the post credits whatnot yeah so wait yeah. lou you have yes okay yeah the, the fucking shazam family shows at the end of that film and the marvel family like, i was not at all prepared for that whatsoever mm-hmm. um and like yeah, my, fir- my first run in with them was uh in flashpoint when they all get horribly murdered by wonder woman uh <laughs> <laughs> Where she picks up, she picks up Billy Batson as a child and stabs him with a sword. See, I got, oh I got God. really excited when people started saying like, "Oh man, there's something really big that happens later in the movie." I was getting real excited that the uh, talking tiger was going to show up at some point. No, I think Tony, honestly, I, I think, I think that is the next move because I think yeah, yeah. Is, like the fact we went yeah. with we we went with the Shazam family in the first film the next logical step that movie's post credit is a fucking villainous talking bookworm all right like yeah. <laughs> well mastermind is awesome though yeah, yeah but like for a movie you know for that is for a, a mass audience to do right. those two things I'm like wow you really believe in this IP right now um, exactly yeah my so point I think, is I think they're going to go I can't remember what it's called, but there's like the other lands that the Shazam, mm-hmm. the Marvel family is connected to, and one of them is where Tawny comes from, where it's all okay. amp- anthropomorphic animals. Yeah. Um, also, Taliban Final Crisis. So I'm yeah. Um, also, uh, uh, Black Adam is supposed to happen at some point soon, and apparently that is going to make him an antihero, which I fucking hate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he kind of technically is for the most part. Like I get I, doing that, yeah. but we just don't need a movie focused on him. Like making right. him that in a movie as an antagonist works. It's the Venom it's like, problem because now you have to now ev- inevitably you have to have him fight Shazam. But right, he's going to be positioned as a bad guy then. Yeah, but is it a period piece? Because Black uh, Adam is supposed to be from like. Conduct way back well, when, yeah, like every ancient time we hear about it, it, yeah, every time we hear about it, it changes. But I feel like I feel like is it, is it, it, it the Rock work. doing Scorpion King with a cape? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, here, here's the thing: because <laughs> the Scorpion King is the best uh, Conan the Barbarian movie made in the last thirty years. Uh, uh, so that's even though it's, even though, sad. even though it still kind of sucks, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it's it kind of works because because the Conan the Barbarian movie we got in the past fifteen years is terrible. Yeah, it sucks because it has maybe the best cast Conan ever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it has it has one of my favorite, um, unfortunately cast actresses in Hollywood right now, which is Rachel Nichols. That woman, oh God, cannot get a break with no. any fucking thing she's in. And the f- I think one of the last things I saw her in um, was uh, it was this movie called Rays that is I thought it was going to star her and Rosario Dawson because they're headlined in it they're their their top build the star of the movie is the woman that shows up in every Quentin Tarantino movie as like some kind of badass extra who doesn't have any lines um, mm-hmm. who's like one of his stunt coordinators and it's this movie oh, about Zoe- women who get. Oh. 
Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. She's a fucking star, and Rachel Nichols shows up and gets her fucking skull kicked in and like gruesomely murdered in the first like seven minutes. Yeah, well, Zoe Bell was uh, was Uma Thurman's stunt double in the Kill Bill movies, and that's when yes, discover her essentially. Yeah, she's yeah. one of the stars in Death Trap. Yep. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, uh, that movie Rage Death is about Proof. basically yeah, Death Proof. Um, it's about uh, it's about Audrey Horn from Twin Peaks and somebody else running an underground fighting league with all women. Oh, so it's like that episode of Justice League. I don't know what you're talking oh, yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> There's an episode of the Justice League cartoon where uh, Roulette gets it's Huntress, Hawkwoman, Black Canary, and Vixen fight, and then they kind of they're all like a couple of them are mind controlled and they fix and they're like. All right, now we're gonna beat you. She's like, "Wait, you think this is all I had?" And then Wonder Woman rises up, and they're all oh, like, shit. "They all like shit their pants." Right. Um, yeah. Oh, this is shit. yeah. This is like they're all kidnapped and they're forced to fight to the death, and it is fucking gruesome. Um, because and like I said, Rosario Dawson's also in that movie, and she gets I think someone she gets someone's thumbs in her eye sockets for like thirty seconds, and then gets her head Ooh. caved in. Fuck. Oh, ouch! Yeah, it's a nasty ass movie, and I sat through the whole thing after it was done. I was like, "Well, that was a miserable experience." <laughs> yeah, I won't be watching that. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fun to know that it exists, and I watched it because like it had a weird, rep- it had like that kind of reputation around it, where it's like, "Yeah, it's really nasty." <sighs> and I watched mm-hmm. it. I was like, "That was devoid of joy." Uh, and then at some point, like I can't remember her name, but Audrey Horn gets fucking thrown through a fucking window and down several stories. I don't know. And I think the protagonist, Zoe Bell, escapes and then gets shot by a sniper. <laughs> ah. Cool. Yeah. Ah. Awful. Um, oh, well, yeah, look at that. Also, Black Canary looks like she's uh, uh, attending a circus in that get Yeah, that was just back in her, like, rock star, like, era phase of, like, design. Oh, I remember this episode. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. now in the movie she's gonna be in, she looks like she's gonna go to a rave or something. Uh, uh-huh. I feel yeah. like that entire yeah. unless we want to get into it, like I I'm really upset about the Cassandra Cain thing. Like, I, it it not really bothers me a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's <laughs> I saw in the one chat, Lou, that uh that who was it? What Teo had made the point that he understands why it's it's bothersome, but in the same sense having a mute Asian woman who's really good at martial arts might not exactly paint the best picture that DC Warner Brothers is trying to throw out there. That, that I understand. Don't, don't use the character. That I understand, but yeah. every every other stylistic choice drives me fucking insane. Well, Zaz is, just, yeah. like, is so bad. Like, a lot, Zaz, yeah. yeah, a lot of the choices don't make sense to me. Why make, why make that character specifically Zaz? Um... I don't. I don't really. Here's the thing, and this is going to be bad. This this is going to sound unusual from this show, and like almost like a cardinal sin coming out of my mouth. The Gotham Zaz is better. Yes, you know what? I don't disagree. Even though I don't, (laughs) I'm not even saying like it's the guy. He's been in a ton of stuff too. Right. Well, and here's the thing. Like, I'm willing. I'm still willing to give the movie a chance. I'm not seeing anything that tells me why. E- Ewan McGregor is a uh, black mask. Like I'm not, I'm not. He, seeing yeah, it. at this point, like he, you. he is just a weirdly dressed Roman Sionis, and that's it. He's right. got to get, he's got to get those dick pics out of that diamond dog. If that is the right. actual plot, yeah. I'm not even sure how I feel about that. Like, at, the same, at one hand, I'm like, that's so insane that I love it, and on the other hand, I'm it like, what the fuck also. would possess you to do that? Yeah. Yeah, it I'm does, it does work, though. I think there is sure. some weird comic yeah. connection between Zaz and Black Mask. Sure, but I'm just saying, like, there are many characters in the history of Batman who are gangsters that you could have made this that are less important than Black Mask, well, but even that word doesn't seem right. Um, I, kind of, I kind of wonder if some of them were put on the do not touch list because of not being yeah. Batman presented sure on who what they're doing with the Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Falcone and Maroney are off limits. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I, mean, I don't mind could, Black you Mask. You there. could probably get away with one of like one of their offspring. Like who was who's Holiday? It's uh Albert 
felt. I think yeah. that he's going to be in that movie. Though. I, th- I yeah. think that's what this Batman movie is going to be. Which do we just want to move to that since we're yeah. heading well, down that fuck, path, anyways? Yeah. Fuck yeah, yes, I want to talk yes. about this fucking movie because I'm not really. I, I have yeah. nothing to say about Birds of Prey except how disappointing it looks. But like this movie is shaping up to be like. Mm-hmm. I'm as excited for this as I was for Batman Begins when that was rolling around. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And like, I, yeah, sure, I was excited for Batman vs Superman, but that, like, the ground beneath that movie started to shrink well before it came out. Because like well, there was yeah. like, yeah, because like the trailer came out, you're like, you just told me the whole fucking mil- movie. Well, this is the other thing that we had like two years to think about that movie before seeing it. Yep. So I just remember the. <sighs> the anticipation being like a telescope where it was constantly going in and out, in and out and changing, Mm -hmm. depending on what we were hearing about what was going on behind the scenes. Um, So it was like two months of, Oh, I'm excited for this. And then an announcement would happen and be like, I don't know about that. Then Jesse Eisenberg gets announced as Lex. And then we see that in action. (laughs) And And we're we're like, like, no, no, (laughs) what are you doing? Well, it's to, uh, to quote a uh, wonderful person in Pixels and Reels. <laughs> what in the <laughs> vegan soy boy is this guy doing? Oh, you mean that? You mean that? You know what? I don't even give a shit at this point. You mean that guy I fucking stuffed and then everyone jumped on him? Yeah, um, guys. What a living, what a living what a, douchebag. I don't. Yeah. He, I, he's never, yeah. That guy's never going to hear this, but what a fucking idiot that guy is. Um, and he backpedaled so hard, too. I love I didn't, that. I, I, I don't. He did, but he didn't even backpedal. That's the thing. He didn't he I would call it backpedaling. Yeah. He didn't I don't even remember what that was for. He was that respond. not the same guy? No, there's no. He never, oh, wow. He, he never came back yeah. because, because yeah. one, like, I admit, I, I confidently shut him down. Um, <laughs> yes. Because, like I said, you remember when Michael Keaton was a giant, hulking mass of muscle? Me neither. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, no, he and was that Mr. was Mom. it. <laughs> yeah, he was Mr. Mom. And like Eric jumped in, was like, "You went with fucking soy boy? Like you went with that fucking <laughs> banal, I mean, stupid." That was under those vehicle? pictures that were not even new. They were like some yeah. just posted random pictures. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, some 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 fucking moron referred to Robert Pattinson as a as a vegan soy boy because he's thin, um, and right. he got rightfully trounced by anybody who passed by that post. <laughs> Yeah, it, like because Batman has never had different forms and different body types based on the yeah, artist was, or story right, they're I, trying to tell. I was even thinking, like, dude, Val Kilmer was not a fucking giant. Like George Clooney was no. not a mountain of muscle. Oh no, well, Val Kilmer was the biggest one of them. Yeah, I think, yeah, he was, yeah, he was. was. Yeah, and he wasn't but, even like. He was chonk, as we as we like to say on this yes. show. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and he was blonde. It was fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. I think Val Kilmer is already a big dude to begin with. Like I, I don't exactly. know how tall. I feel like Val he's Kilmer like. Is. Yeah, I feel like he's like six four or something. Something like that. Like yeah. yeah, I mean, thinking about Top Gun, and I mean, you can't really compare it to Tom Cruise because Tom Cruise is right. effectively a midget. But it, it, like, yeah, Val Kilmer is not a short <laughs> dude. <laughs> so it's it's. <laughs> It's unfair to even say like, "Oh, he's the biggest one." It's just well, like, yeah, apparently Val Kilmer's like type. six feet tall. Okay, yeah. but still, yeah. like, but, but like, you look at like one, you look at the Frank Miller Batman, and he is just like he's made of boulders, and his chin it looks like it's been it's been carved out of granite, um, right? And then you look at uh, Year One Batman, which is the same artist and same writer. It's um, two well, it's a, no, it's a different. It's a different artist. It's a uh, Klaus. Okay. I think yes. is the artist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the same associate with Miller, and that Batman is like a lean, inexperienced yes. detective. Yep. Whereas yeah. the Frank Miller Batman from Dark Knight Returns is this like he looks like a mutant. Um, yeah, he's like a sixty-five-year-old steroid. Right. Queen. He's a sixty-five-year-old like, wrestler yeah. who fucking snaps people's legs. Like yeah. <laughs> he looks like what Sylvester Stone looks like now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And- <laughs> God damn. It. Um, but yeah, like he doesn't he doesn't look like a human being. But I guess like No, he this, doesn't at all. There's this thing where I think there are a lot of people who think they're super like deep Batman fans because they've read The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, the um, most famous Batman book of all time. 
Right. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm a real, I'm a real Bat fan. I know what I'm talking about. So for them, that is what Batman is supposed I, to look and you know like. What's weird? It's like I'm reading Long Halloween now, which is funny because mm-hmm. I bought it around my birthday and didn't pick it up until around like the week before Halloween. And now I'm mm-hmm. like, and I, the other day I just stopped reading the part where um the Christmas killing happens. I'm like, so am I just subconsciously turning this into my own Long Halloween? Is that what this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. But in that mo- in that book, he's drawn like first of all, you barely see his limbs. He's a mm-hmm. flowing cape. He's like Spawn in that book. He's mostly yeah. cape. And that's yeah. to me, that's the kind of that's the Batman I like the most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is like, and then when you I do like see him, like he's when you do see him, he's he's lean but cut and fit. Yeah. But he's not like just fucking muscles on muscles on muscles and muscles. Or as Jerry Lawler yeah. once said, like he has muscles in places that he had places. Right. Um. Yeah, because uh, it, if you think about it, you can't move. Like giant yeah. bodybuilders can't move, and that's why. why he, and that's why I like the Frank Miller Batman being an old fucking man because, right? Like his his body would be so brittle that he would have to make up for it by putting mm-hmm. on this. Just it is very much like Rocky Balboa. In yeah, the I was gonna say, yeah, that's, that's because in that movie, don't they say, yeah, it's like don't they say like your like you have calcium deposits in your bones, you can't spar. Um, yes, not as fast as you used to be. So we're going to train you to do something called hurting bombs, which is just like they just they taught him how to just hit really, really mm-hmm. fucking hard. Um, yeah. And like, so I buy that Bruce being a giant mountain of muscle because he has to be able mm-hmm. to devastate people in a short amount of time. And that's why I love the oh. fight with the Joker, because the Joker fight is an endurance test that he barely wins. Mm-hmm. Well, and even Affleck, uh, uh, his Batman is doing that because he's supposed to be older. That's yeah. why that made sense. If he had been, if he had done Batman in 2002, I would expect him to be about where he was in Daredevil. Daredevil. In oh, yeah. Body. Um, I wouldn't expect him to put on too much more muscle and be perfect for that character. Also, there's like, there's a happy medium you get, even as a small guy, mm-hmm. as far as built goes. Like, Christian yeah. Bale did The Machinist, came back for Batman Begins, and they were like, Cool, you I'm glad you put that weight muscle. on. You gotta lose <laughs> muscle because you're too fucking big for the suit we made for Right. You. Yeah. yeah. And, and even if you if you look at the difference between Batman Begins and Dark Knight, you can see he lost some considerable amount of weight too for he, that. Like he is what? a much lither Batman Dark Knight. Well Yeah, and actually you know what's funny? Is that I actually the long more time passes, I really, really hate the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises suit. I really hate it. Um because it makes him look really tiny, especially in the third one when it's yeah. The third one, it, when it's all lit up like that, I'm like, he just he looks like a fucking motor a motocross guy with a bat helmet on. Because yeah. yeah. Batman shouldn't be filmed in the daytime. No, yeah, yeah he, I do. Yeah, I do like the snow. The snow is fucking cool, and I like the, the entire. Snow, yeah. I like all the, the aesthetics cool. surrounding the uh, the final fight with Bane, even if that is just like, yeah, I punch you, you punch me, I punch you, you punch me. Last um, time right. I just didn't punch hard enough. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It literally right reminds spots. me of to go to like the Dragon Ball Z bridge, to, like the Return Revenge of Cooler. The, yeah, the, mm-hmm. I don't want like, it. To, like, I figured it out. We just gotta hit him really, really, really hard. hard. Right, exactly. <laughs> but um, um, but yeah, but, with uh, the uh, with the Batman story that we were were going to cover was just the uh, the inclusion of who was the actor again? Peter Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard. Yes. Who uh, me yeah. and Connor uh, we revisited a film that he was in. Very recently. Um, oh, what the fuck did we watch? <laughs> Green Lantern. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus oh, fucking God. Christ. In oh, which he if... was the best part of it, I would say. I uh, forgot. No. I forgot that's no, he's him. Not. Mark Strong is the best part of that movie. No, yes. okay. Lou, here's the thing. This is my problem. Everybody says that. He's just doing Mark Strong. I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> and he's awesome at it. <laughs> yes, but... We just talked about Shazam. Doing... He's not doing anything that special to me as a Mark Strong uh, super fan. I, what I <laughs> say, he is like, like he's just Robert, doing. He's doing. Robert Downey Jr. Mark was Strong. born to play Tony Stark. Mark Strong was born to play Sinestro. Sure, but I think, I think guard. I think that's the problem. Is that like it, one? It's not that Mark Strong is. He is amazing in that movie because he's amazing in everything. But I think the problem mm-hmm. is, it the the. The thing about Green Lantern is the unsung potential of how good of a villain he could have been that right. you never get it. So it, it makes his performance in the first movie, the only movie, like right. it kind of yeah. enhances it to the point where you're like, oh, 
you could have been so good. And like the character design is so good. Like that's the, yeah. sure. the problem I have with Star sure. with Hector Hammond is it's oh, what's this so movie? bad. Like it's just like it <laughs> no, it's looks, not. It looks no, so it, bad. I think it looks pretty cool, and he's doing like a Hannibal Lecter thing. With that and we, I, we talked about. I'm we talked about. The, we talked about in the movie dumpster episode how like. The more he transforms, the more his posture changes, and the more he looks like he is in constant mm-hmm. physical yeah, discomfort. He turns into Quasimodo. Yeah, and like it's he's great. all hunched over, and he's like, oh, die. I, I, I like, love when he's just like, boo, and, and it's just, and his like delivery is just like, uh, he's he's playing he's, up the villain. Aspect. He's actually uh, he's fantastic in Orphan mm-hmm. uh, with uh, with Vera Farminga and uh, that uh, creepy child. Um, who's uh, well? She's oh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, that movie As that it, became real life. He's great. He's yeah, great. he's great. <laughs> Season three of The Killing as this man who's on death row. Really, for, I like, I have like, only watched like a single episode of The Killing, and I fucking love what I saw, and never went back to it for some reason. Yeah, it's it's a show that's like that. Uh, yeah. I was like, holy shit! I, I was like, wow, Joel Kinnaman's great, and that wife from World War Z is also in. This. So the the only way I want to see Hector Hammond is if his head is five times the size of his body. <laughs> I mean, and, it's uh, pretty close. And, uh, no, no, we, not, wait, it's not close. Eric, Eric, no, I'm Eric, talking. You want to be like MTV's the head? Like, is that what you want? Like, wait, do you not I, know no, what I, Hector I, Hammond looks like in the comics? I know what he looks like in the comics, but like, yeah, that's, that's I, yeah, what I, I think really, we all know. Five yeah, times the size of his head would be MTV's the head. Well, five times the size of his body. No, I'm I'm talking proportionally though, like not just uh, not just tall. I'm saying like <laughs> a normal head that's just five times the size of the body that's carrying it, which is well, what Hector Hammond like, looks uh, like in the comic. Hmm? Go ahead, Lou. Oh, I was gonna say like, wow, I lost the character's name, but the one from South Park. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I can't remember his name, um, but yeah, I don't know what's the what's the theory on who Skarsgård is going to be playing in the Batman because I know the tweet that uh... went out was there was a bat symbol next to it, but not like the Batman symbol, but just a bat. And I know one of the theories was that he'd be playing uh, what's his face, Kirk Langstrom. I mean, that's a good that's a good pick. Yeah, you, I think wait, I brought was, up that you. You cut out yeah. as soon as you said playing, and then oh. you cut out Kirk uh, Kirk Langstrom. Kirk Langstrom. So man bat. Um, yes. Oh, but ooh. the doctor. Ooh. So if they're doing like a wolf man thing where he's like, uh, you know, burdened by his guilt. Like I could, I could see that, and Peter Sarsgaard can handle that pretty well. Um, well, I so, could yeah. see them not even introducing man bat in this movie because I, I still sure. think the the safe money is on them doing a long Halloween adaptation, which that would be the right. smart way to go. Don't go anything mm-hmm. too fantastic. Go with like a a crime. Mm-hmm. story but also have the batman in it don't don't do a nolan movie batman movie which was just mm-hmm. a crime movie that happened to have batman do a batman movie that happens to be about his strength as a detective right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a lot of ways to go with it um and we already know we have like the falcones in it and mm-hmm. if it's based on long halloween like if we get a he could be a really good calendar man Mm-hmm. Well, so also they they've announced a lot of other people who I don't think we got a chance to talk about before. So no. John Turturro is Carmine Falcone, uh, Jeffrey Wright as Gordon, and Andy Serkis as Alfred. Alfred. Um, which I think those are the main ones that we didn't get a chance to talk about. Before. I think they're all great. Andy yes. Serkis, I like. I love him as an actor. It's like I wonder what this Alfred will be because I'm like really I I imagine <sighs> they lean into the whole MI6 former commando he'll, he'll be dude. he'll be very much in line with what Jeremy was which is a more tough sassy uh, older man yeah I imagine something like that um, um, yeah. I'm gonna run to the restroom continue <laughs> yeah I, I, I mean I, Christmas I've Christmas. always I've always wondered um like if they'll ever do a flashback to Alfred doing all that stuff, sort of you like know, the TV show the... that they made, right? Well, I was gonna say it's showing <laughs> the story from the Dark Knight where he's <laughs> we were in Burma, um, <laughs> size of a tangerine, um, but that, that I think something like that would be interesting. But I, a character who you could see just having retired from that kind of work 
just not too long ago. Yeah, I um, think I brought up before. There's a really good Snyder story he did with that mm-hmm. of like that life coming back into their lives, mm-hmm. and it was really good. And it was kind of like their version of Knight and Squire. Yeah, that could be something. And like the Knight be, being a yeah. like a kind of MI five level. Mm-hmm. Um, Entity that people get trained to become. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's not exactly, but somewhat similar to the idea of the, uh, the new, not new 52, the, uh, rebirth run of uh, detective comics. I don't know if either of you have ever checked that out, which I actually read the first 12 issues a while yeah. ago and really uh, which... liked it. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I've read them all, so like, I'm not sure which story you're talking about. Uh, just the idea that like, uh, there's a military group that's been studying Batman for years and have actually been trained oh. to be a military group that has all of Batman's abilities, but isn't that military Batwoman's, precision? Isn't that Batwoman's dad that runs yes. that? Yes. yes, yes, that was the big twist. Yeah, but yeah, that's that is. I think that would be something awesome to take from yeah. further down the um. line. But not, yeah. not. Right. I really think with this new Batman movie, they need to stick to some very basics of Batman. Oh, and not they need go to yeah. scale it down real hard from yeah. where they've been. Yeah, mm-hmm. they need to not go into too many of the fantastical elements. And I mean, yeah. I, they don't need to bring the Joker in for a while, if at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm he, okay with soft hints, you know. Or like, like references is fine. Mm-hmm. Like it, it can open with you know a month ago, Ace Chemicals blew up. Um, yeah, you know something to that. I also effect. want like new characters. Um, like we're getting yeah. a Riddler. We've gotten yeah. two Absolutely. live action Riddlers. Like, can I get a Clayface? Can I get yeah. um I don't know mm-hmm. name another uh, Mad Hatter? Can I get? Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Like Mad Hatter yeah. would be like a really but, interesting like, fucked up. So at story. the same time, yeah. um, if they pull off a reveal the way that Arkham Origins did. Um, and I know that's a game, yeah. so it's a slightly different thing. And I don't think that they can pull off that reveal because we know it now. We would kind of expect it. But if they were able to pull off a reveal like that, where it's like <laughs> Black Mask <laughs> takes it off and he's actually the Joker, um, that would be interesting. But at the same time, don't don't just wait. Just let it let it settle. Yeah, um, it's like because a lot of people I know you guys like at some point said like, oh maybe Scar's got to play Harvey Dent. I'm like. Can we put yeah. Harvey Dent down and away for a while? Yeah. Like, I feel like well, almost as much as the Joker. Like, I yeah, I don't need him. No. Well, okay, I, I would be okay with Dent. I don't want yeah. him to be Two Face yet. Um, I just feel like it's like the idea of Two Face is like a writer's wet dream. And that's why like they constantly want to use him because mm-hmm. he's so easy to yeah. write for. Like, oh, it's the duality. It's the yin and yang. The good mm-hmm. versus evil. Yeah, I mean, going back to, like, villains that that they could do properly, like, hey, let's bring back Victor Freeze. Like, let's actually do him properly, because he oh. has a wonderfully tragic backstory that could work so well on the screen. Mm-hmm. Just do a live-action version of the animated show? Yes. And in some of those characters, they would be more interesting to explore them before they are they're in their villain forms but not constantly be making jokes about how they're gonna be villains um because uh there's no show on tv that does that ever that hasn't <laughs> um <laughs> but um it would be interesting to see that uh to have yeah, victor like, freeze before being mr freeze and to really play that out in an interesting way yeah well it's um, like man bat would be interesting because he's another mm-hmm. tragic character like he's you know, yeah. trying to... He's the same character as the lizard from Spider-Man. Like, yeah. just a different ammo. But, right. like, that's why, like, yeah. I think Basil Carl... Uh, like, Clayface would be such a cool thing to do. Because yes. it's interesting, and it's sad. And, like, yeah. you could do a bunch of awesome stuff with him. Well, if you want to go I'm... wacky, just put the ventriloquist in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, or... Well, like, it's, I'm trying to think, like... 
Scarecrow, I mean, he was he was handled well in Batman Begins, I guess. I don't know. I just I want to say like somebody like Poison Ivy or something could be really good. Hush, I don't want them to ever touch. Like that would just be. I don't think that would work really well on the screen. You would need um, to be yeah. like seven movies down the line for it to have any yeah. weight. Yeah, That's you would need problem. to set him up for a while. Like you would have to have all kinds of hints and like. Easter there's so him. yeah, there's so many moving parts to that story, which is why the yeah. animated version was not good. Mm-hmm. Hugo Strange could be really good. He would like, be fascinating. Yeah, yeah. But he yeah. would need to work as like a as a mastermind. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, we'll have somebody like Firefly working for him, like something along those lines, or having have Hugo Strange working with Kirk Langstrom and something. something More like Hugo a does. bunch of like. Like D list Batman villains, like was it like Amygdala? Oh god, is... crazy quilt. Yeah, or like, <laughs> oh, could you imagine, like, if they had fucking Kite Man in this movie, <laughs> 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 like just one shot of like a guy like jumping out of a building with a kite and then just crashing into the ground and dying? I'd be like, good enough for me. Like I they mean... tried, did Kite Man. <laughs> you don't, you don't even have to go with all of the esotericness and like adherence to all of Batman lore is actual Batman lore and do right. something like Professor Pig from the Oh, Morrison Professor run. Pig would be great. Yeah. yeah. Like or, or Calculator too. Like there's there are a ton of characters that have not been touched on and mm-hmm. it just it's disappointing that they just keep going back to the same well of Catwoman, Two-Face, Joker, Penguin. I mean Riddler is a nice inclusion because we haven't had somebody do a good Riddler since ever. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, have gotten I, two versions of him, though. Well, I, I would say the '66 Riddler, considering what was existent at that time, it's a good, it's a good Riddler for, yeah. for, the, for the time and for the tone of that show. But yes, like there hasn't been a good modern representation of the Riddler in wider pop culture outside of yeah. maybe even but, animated series. But I couldn't even no, because like there's not even a animated. lot they do in that. With him, yeah. Because the problem is, is, he's for the most part, unless you get someone that's a really good writer, exactly. he's very Joker light. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. he's very easy to confuse for the Joker. So much that uh, we talked about this before. Scott Snyder had to write like a back issue between issue where he's like, "This is why Riddler won't be involved in is it death of the family or death in the family? I can't death remember. of the family." It's death of the family, where it's like, this is why he won't be there or why he's not going to be there much because he's too similar and we can't have him interfering with what the Joker is doing. Um, and the Joker's like, this is why I'm leaving you locked in your cell, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is why, like, again, and then Snyder did, which I should really like, it was like the War of Jokes and Riddles. Yeah. Of to actually, well, like, do an entire thing of, like, this is why these two characters are different. Right. And I also liked Zero Year, which I thought really like defined mm-hmm. the differences between the two of them. Where yeah. it's like one of them, he's a long plotter. He thinks ahead and he's very much about like, you know, he's not playing chess or playing Go. He's playing chess and Go at the same time. Um yeah, and what is you're the still term? playing like checkers. Chaotic evil and then like organized evil. I yeah, chaotic evil would be uh, the Joker, and, and uh, was it lawful evil? Yeah, lawful evil would probably somewhere. Yeah, because there's there's what there's neutral true. I can't remember all of. I yeah. should know all of them. I play D D yeah. on a semi weekly basis, but yeah, but, it's yeah. Joker's like pure chaos for evil, and then Riddler's mm-hmm. like pure control. Like everything has to be controlled. Yeah, to the so. End. Uh, so yeah, fun so fact, everybody. Fun <laughs> fact, everybody. If you eat gingerbread cookies that have been cooked in molasses that have marshmallows oh, stuck between no. them that have been dipped in chocolate, <laughs> they will destroy <laughs> your bowels. <laughs> uh, yes. I blame the doctor who made them and brought them in, not me. This I reminds no me of a Hard Times article I saw earlier uh, where it's like, I need to know the genders of gingerbread cookies in order to be to know whether I should be sexually aroused by them or not. <laughs> um, not to veer off, but like, yeah, my one of the doctors I work with brought in these like co- sandwich cookies. And it's two gingerbread cookies that have been cooked in molasses with marshmallow in between them, dipped in uh, dark chocolate. That's, no, I was that's like, not... I was like, I was like, you trying to kill a motherfucker? Yeah, man? I know. Like, that's, that's, 
that man's not a doctor. He's a Batman villain. Like, right. Oh, it, he it, is a Batman. A, yeah. It's, not, it's uh, not even a he. It's a she. Oh, um, God. The yeah. Baker. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> then, yes. Batman tragically accidentally killed her husband in some sort of crime gone <laughs> right. wrong. And yeah. And now she's trying to kill people with her baking goods. Um, I, in, I said, you know what this is, right? And she goes, Daya. And I was like, Diabetes. <laughs> yes. She's the confectioner. Yeah. Okay, so we kind of went off the rails and started talking about uh, the Riddler. So I guess do we have any sort of thoughts mm. on the casting that they did? Um, it's fucking I mean, insane. Because, I kind of yeah. want to talk about some trailers in a minute, though, because we've been running a little. But yes. I kind of want to get to some of those because there's one in particular uh, I really want to talk about. The only thing I want to say is John Turturro is Carmine Falcone. It's like, fucking perfect. Just yes. like mm. why? How did this not happen? <laughs> All right. I, I said in the chat, they better hire his brother to play another Falcone. Yes. He would just be so good. Yes. Um, As I just want to say, maybe. like, just, just the cast of this movie alone, the cast of um, this movie alone is just like making my fucking mouth water. Um, yeah. Uh, but, like, also, I'm just going to say it now on this show that not a lot of people listen to. Um, if I hear one more person decry Pattinson. <laughs> Because he was in Twilight eleven fucking years ago, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna say anything anymore, and I'm just gonna mm-hmm. stick my foot all the way down your throat. Right. Yeah, go go watch Cosmopolis. Go watch mm-hmm. Good Time. Like go watch the yeah. Lighthouse. Go watch. Go watch, go watch yeah, the exactly. rover. Exactly. Exactly. Watch the rover where he yeah. he masturbates in a car. If I'm not <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, oh, I cannot who remember. Hasn't done that. Give me. Well, I it's in the post apocalypse. And uh, you know what? There's not many other places to do it. So was he yeah. driving while doing it? Because that's no. Like, you take it up to the next level. He's and... uh, so he plays like a, a a challenged young man, a challenged young Australian man, um, who's been left alone in a car by challenged by not being able to nut in a car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, because Guy Pierce was there, and he had to leave in order for him to finish. So. Um, but Guy Pierce is off being Guy Pierce and being really like Australia. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, and he's off there. I think he's not in a car. I cannot remember. I need to watch that movie again. I remember important. loving it. And yeah. Connor, you saying you haven't yet? Hope springs eternal, my friend. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> I mean, you can nut in a car in the desert, Connor. You can you can recreate that scene from that film. So. I don't think we need. To, I don't think we need to talk about my uh, position on that any further. Um, I was going to say, if you're going to do it, make sure you tip your Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially considering I don't have a fucking car, so the literally the only way that I would. Oh, I'm sure there's some burned out husks of cars in the desert. You can look into some of those. If I yeah. I'll go back to New Jersey. There's burned out husks of cars everywhere. Oh, there's burnt out husks of people who are still walking in Jersey too. So, um, no, no, they're all in the movie Prancer. I learned that lesson. <laughs> Do we want to talk about Lock and Key at all, or Power Rangers? Do we just want to move on to trailers? Lock well, and Key. Uh, Lock and Lock- Key. I'm excited for, but I don't know how many of you have actually read it. Here's the thing. Yeah, I know. I know yeah, what it, it is. Years, I know what it is. I know there's a pilot that never fucking made it. Made it anywhere. Um, yeah. It exists. They started again, I guess, yeah. for this Netflix and it, version. It, okay, this is the show about the house that has, like, a key for rooms, and every room leads to, like, a different dimension or reality. Uh, no, the keys all do different things. Like, there's okay. a head key that opens up your head and lets you mess around with your memories or a person's memories that you use the key on. Or there's a giant key, which, like, it sounds like turns you into a giant. But it's it all has a... a deeper connection to something that's I, it has a Cthulhu myth uh, or Cthulhu mythos connection to an extent okay um, I think I'm the story say. is more like Netflix is throwing money at like awesome crazy comic books yes because they're not just doing that they also have like a deal for a Sandman TV mm-hmm. show yeah and yep. like the, in the same will never happen we're gonna bring <laughs> yeah. it yeah we're gonna Unfilm- bring it unfilmable the um the Power Rangers reboot which like just gonna come out and say it again. 
I don't give a shit about Power Rangers beyond a very few specific things. Well, it's it's being or the creator of the show, The End of the Fucking World, which you guys should watch. It's quite good. It's super nihilistic and a lot of fun. Um, I'm I'm shocked that that person wants to do this do the Power Rangers, which have always kind of hit me as bright and sunny and fun. So it would be an interesting uh, a juxtaposition for them. Hey, not if that. you're not if you're that one idiot who runs the bootleg universe, then it has to be rated R and has to have <sighs> people saying fuck all the time and people have to yeah. die. Yeah, because that's how eight year olds think that things are adults. If you say uh, fuck and things the die. The best thing that guy lives. made was the uh, Dirty Laundry Punisher. Uh, yes, the, the that, was that was great. That was great. Thomas Jane. Um, yeah, I mean, I know Arlen had to run away for a second. Um, do we want to just move on to trailers then? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I want to talk about two in particular because I haven't seen the trailers for Stargirl or No Time to Die yet. Um, uh, Wonder Woman 1984, even though I know nothing about this movie, uh, sh- just shut up and put it in me. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She she wrote she swung on lightning bolts. Yep. Yeah, I don't need anything else. Also, <laughs> I I don't know if that cover of Blue Monday is an official thing or was made for the trailer, but I fucking need it. Yeah, it's, I need it. It's too. probably similar to uh, the Johnny Cash cover of Hurt that they did for Logan that they they changed some of the right. stuff around a little bit. So it's they, probably an existing cover, but they they fiddled with it the way they needed to. Yeah, and I if, think I've gotten suggestions for it in YouTube while listening to stuff. Yeah, so. um, if for those who don't, you can find the uh, the Logan trailer version of Hurt on YouTube if you look for it, and it's mostly the same. However. There is added percussion at the end that changes the entire tone of the song, and it's totally worth tracking down. Um, but uh, Maxwell Lord is the villain. Kristen Wiig is Cheetah, and that is fascinating to me. Um, yeah, I'm still like, what does that mean? Because we don't really see much of either of them yeah. in the trailer. Well, this movie's also, what, two years out? Uh, next, no, it's no, this it's summer. A year out. Next, yeah, yes. it's next so we're, this is this is the this is the teaser. It's not really a trailer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, oh god, this is. Just, I'm sorry. <sighs> this is just to get our fucking just to get our taste buds going. Our beef um, sweat. Yes. yes, and like mm-hmm. the visuals are still just captivating. Um, and oh, that other costume Diana, that she puts on, Diana. <sighs> that's not. Even, I I don't even like that one uh, as much as I like the the more. Uh, uptoned traditional costume she puts on. Oh, um, I well, think it's the armored the one. Same costume. They just I think got the rid of the stupid filter. I think the armored yeah. one is fucking cool, but like the one she's got out with the, the stark red um, is great. And I love the I slow mo shots of her popping a bullet out of a fucking gun's chamber and then uh, handing it into somebody. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, and like, it, um, I think it was Cosmonaut who was talking about how like Marvel action is only good, like, Two thirds of the time, whereas he said, like the even the action, like Batman vs Superman, and especially Wonder Woman, is just like you're you can't help but stare at it because it's just beautiful. They uh, do yeah. a much better uh, job of like using slow mo to yes, enhance action. You, I I still make, and I think we were all in agreement on this that the uh, the the Batman warehouse fight is as good as the Wonder Woman No Man's sequence that extends all the way into like the church and the building um it's pretty it's pretty good yeah yeah I, see i don't know i i guess i'm in the minority here like wonder one was okay it just didn't do much for me like and i it That's has fair. it just it i don't know like i it's not that i'm i'm like oh i i only like marvel movies or i only like this particular type of thing but i have i have yet to be impressed by anything from dc really like, yeah, well, I, think it was really like, I mean, here's the thing: like, the, how much fucking trouble has that has Warner Bros. had with all these films? Like, they, mm-hmm. they, yeah. I, th- I think Wonder Woman went back for a bunch of reshoots too. Um, yeah, it did, but it went back for like the bare minimum amount that you expect for a movie. That yeah, well, and also, also like, like they, they tried and they, to interfere with it too, and, and they, they all, didn't yeah, want the that fucking, scene. The producers wanted the entire No Man's Land sequence cut. <laughs> and yes. that's that's like the linchpin of the movie. That's the best sequence of the whole film. Because um, mm. once Aerie shows up, you're like, you're just like, especially now that Justice League is passed. I showed Joe um, 
because he hasn't seen Wonder Woman yet. And uh, I showed him a picture of Steppenwolf and Ares side by side. He goes, there's no difference in those two designs. <laughs> like, it is a giant Whoa. guy with a big metal horned helmet, and that's fucking it. He's like, it's yeah. a gray CGI blob. Yeah, Don't one looks better than the other. Yeah, yeah one's Certainly. got David Thewlis underneath it, and that's why. And he was like, and he goes, "That's better." <laughs> I think he should probably watch Wonder Woman. I'm just gonna he, say no, that he, right now. He, he wants to, hasn't gotten around to it yet. He has no fucking desire to watch Justice League. <laughs> no, yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't need he, to. He actually. Here's the funny all. thing. I think I mentioned the chat, but like I have successfully swept him up in Crisis hype, and he wants to watch it. Um, so if anything, he's going to watch like Crisis on Earth X or Crisis on Infinite Earths before he sits down with Justice League. It, you know, it, it, uh, I, mean, I think he, he doesn't give a shit about the DC live action movies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, nor, nor should he really. I mean, yeah. And the I funny thing that, is like, I, he, he's yeah. a Marvel, he's a Marvel kid and right. Sean is the DC kid. And like, I'm, you know, of both worlds. And it's funny cause like. Joe is like, I didn't care about DC growing up. He's like, but he's he's kind of like your hype is kind of. I think he, my hype has infected him a little bit, and now that he's kind mm-hmm. of exposed, he's interested. Meanwhile, Sean is the more extreme version of what Eric just said. He is so utterly defeated by all of DC shenanigans. He doesn't give a fuck about any of it. Yeah, I'm. Almost and he's there. even said he's like he's like Crisis sounds cool. He's like, but I don't care. Like, oh <laughs> yeah. Crisis yeah. is awesome, though. Yeah, and he, he said he, everything I've told him. He's like, "That's awesome." He's like, "But I don't want to." F-. He's like, "But it's." He's like, "I just feel like there's too much, and I don't want to sit down and watch it." And it's understandable. Um, but yeah. um, with like Wonder Woman and Shazam and Aquaman, like Aquaman is good and great at times, but you have to kind of be patient for it to really start to pop because I don't think that movie really starts to come alive until like the last half. Um, and. Shazam, I think, is like probably the top of that list because it's just yeah, it nails everything. And Wonder Woman is like, this is this, like you're kind of aping Captain America's formula here. Um, it and, was also like an oasis in the middle of a desert of garbage. I, yes, I, that's so, true. Yeah. And and the and I think the, and I think the third act of Wonder Woman is really because once Ares shows up, you're like you're like I just said, you're like you're just a CGI goblin. <clears throat> Really, no depth. Yeah. Now. See, my Definitely, wife and I, yeah. My yeah. wife and I wanted more of Themyscira. Like, I could have watched right. a two-hour movie just about Wonder Woman coming to grips with who she is and her power set, mm-hmm. set in Themyscira, and uh, the end of the movie is the reveal full, of her full going disclosure? to America. Full yeah. disclosure: when Robin Wright, when Robin Wright is offed by a single bullet in that movie, I was furious. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. what's interesting is when, because I saw what me and my wife went to go see in the theaters, and she was like, she was really annoyed. I was like, why is she so dumb? It's like, it takes her so long to be like, oh, this is how things are in the rest of the world. It pissed mm-hmm. her off. It's like, oh, she's supposed to be like this Amazonian that's like learning. It's like, why does she not? Why is it taking yeah, I, her I think, so well, long? I, yeah, and I think, stuff? honestly, honestly, it should have been right after the No Man's Land sequence. Um, yeah. And the No Man's Land sequence, I think, is beautiful because, like, because sh- Steve is like, no, this is, you know, this is No Man's Land. Like, we're not, we're stuck here. This is it. And she's like, bullshit, we're stuck here. She's like, watch this, which is why I love that whole sequence. Um, it's also just visually striking. But yeah, but then after mm-hmm. that, she's like, but war, why? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the new trailer, like, I like how they included the fact of her knocking out cameras because in in this universe, she is still not supposed to research, like have a resurgence until BVS, which I wonder how long it's going to take them to just ignore that shit. I think they're, yeah, I think they've already kind of, I think they're already not caring about that at all. I don't think um, Patty Jenkins cares really all that much. So I think mm-hmm. the thing is, I think Gal Gadot does though, because she's always had sweet things to say about Zack Snyder. Yeah. But I think the yeah. actors are probably That's... the people who are going to hold that up the longest. That's Probably. fine, but they only have so much say in that. Yeah, so. no, I, th- I think, yeah. like I said, it's only going to go on for so long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I think, uh, yeah. But uh, it looks just visually pleasing. Um, Steve Trevor coming back is kind of like. Man. I need to know why. I, I know. Man. I know exactly why. It's it's it has to do with this movie. Looks good to have a monkey's paw plot where yeah, people I think get it does. to people are going to yeah. get to have things they want more than anything in the world granted to them but at the cost of like she's gonna get steve back 
but he's not yes. going to be back forever. And then like whatever, whatever she, whatever she has, she's going to have to give up something to get him back. And then he's going to disappear at the end of the film. Like the wish will be undone. Yeah. I, I'm my guess is that this plot is very Indiana Jones esque, which is something that I'm all the way for. Um, but I think that they're all trying to find something or get to something. Um, yeah. I think that's how Maxwell Lord plays into it. He clearly from the trailers, he wants some sort of mystical object or power to make himself a god of some sort. Um, I, I do I that causes everything. I do really happen. enjoy the clip that I missed the first time I watched the trailer of Diana and Steve walking to the art, the outdoor art exhibit. And she's like, and he's like, so everything here is art. And she goes, yep. And he stops at the trash can. And she's like, no, that's just a trash can. He's like, oh, right. Just a trash can. <laughs> yeah, just a trash can. <laughs> It'll be interesting or, to see if they give Lord his powers, though. We're just yeah. making a human. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'll get, I think he will get powers and then lose them at the end of the film. Yeah. Well, Arlen, um, with the uh, with your earlier point about like thinking there's going to be some sort of mystical item, I think that's how Kristen Wiig is going to end up turning into uh, exactly Cheetah, yeah. Cheetah um, it, because yeah. that's how she kind of did in the comics, if I'm remembering correctly. And she'll mm-hmm. probably be the one who discovers it, and then Maxwell Ward, Lord will take advantage but of it. But I want to I want to move on to the Ghostbusters trailer because I feel yes. like there's a lot that needs to be addressed here, and there's some weird takes that people have had over the last few days and they need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> I haven't I seen these takes. Uh, takes like, takes like the 1984 movie wasn't good anyway. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a, that was, a, that's one that I don't, I don't understand. Um, on what basis is what I really want to ask <laughs> these people. As a film, as like a cinema, right? As like, because as a film, piece. as a film, I think that movie is like objectively perfect. I would say as a comedy, as a comedy, yeah, it's a very yeah. good comedy with some I think it's, solid uh, directing. It's um, people being contrarian because it's fucking cool. I, and they're I cool. think it's a little bit of that. I think it's also like I'm I not going to call I, out anybody, but people I think, who I think people who champion the 2016 movie are very upset. And some of them champion it purely because of its politics, not yes. because it's a good movie. Here's, here's the thing, and I'll say this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I saw that movie as a two-hour escape because right. I just gotten a message about a friend dying. So that movie was literally the perfect thing to get my head out of yes. the trash can that is this world. So in that context, I had a pretty good fucking time with that movie. Mm-hmm. However, when I take a step back and look at it, it's a 90-minute improv sketch that's completely yeah. out of control, and it relies too much on weird, unnecessary nostalgia, um, and yeah. politics surrounding it were nauseating. And it's not even the yeah. fact that it's all women. I don't give a shit that it was all women, because I like those women. I don't really mm-hmm. know anything about Leslie Jones, but whatever. Um, I know she's on SNL. Um, but I like yeah. all those actresses. But, like, it's got fucking queef jokes... And mm. takes that go on for way too fucking long. Mm-hmm. And uh, Paul Feig, for whatever reason, felt like he could contend with internet trolls and got on Twitter and did interviews where he was like, well, blah, 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 and tried to he tried to go tit for tat with these people. And he made a fool out of himself. And then like yeah. Dan Aykroyd went in an interview and like buried this dude. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but he talks about how they said like he, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson all had suggestions that he that Feig ignored. Um, he went over budget. He antagonized fans. And Aykroyd's own words were, "He will not be invited on the Sony lot anytime soon." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like it's it's really weird because Feig, for me, for a while there, I was like, "This is the best comedy director working today." I would, that's mm-hmm. where I was with him. Like nobody else is making better R rated comedies. Nobody else really knows how to direct Melissa McCarthy and not let her sort of take over things. And then he makes that movie, which is just like the most, uh, just overly, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Decadent. No, it's not, I don't know if that's the right word. It's indulgent. Um, indulgent. Um, indulgent. Yes, indulgent, indulgent. Because one, like comedic takes that should end, seconds to minutes before yes. they end go on for an agonizing amount of time um yeah. some of the funniest parts of that movie 
arc because Chris Hemsworth is just Chris relentlessly Hemsworth. charming, and he's Chris Hemsworth. The villain sucks. He mm-hmm. sucks. He does. And he, yeah. he feels like a caricature of incels that is just so non-self-aware and re- yeah. like all the, the his quirks are dated and he has no depth whatsoever. And then the movie has the balls to end with a fucking Zool tease. Like, are you yeah. fucking kidding me? And he and he sucks even worse because I the opening of that movie is actually kind of scary, actually. Like there are parts where like that's genuinely kind of unnerving. Well, which is and, a throwback to the original movie. There's right. like some actual scary shit in that original movie. Yeah, there's some stuff in there that's like that's, um that's f- really full effective. disclosure, the librarian ghost scared the shit out of me Dude, for at least dogs. half of my life. Yeah. Those dogs, man. Oh god. And you um, don't even see them that much. That's the no. thing. For me, I never I never saw the 2016 version and it it had nothing to do with like it's a bunch of women's being in the Ghostbusters roles and that's supposed to be the men's with the penises doing it. Right. It was it was <laughs> Women can't fight ghosts. Yeah, they have um, vaginas. Uh no, it was just for me like and it's because I'm an old man, um I just was like, "Huh, this seems like a very calculated, like, hey, let's play on nostalgia yeah. and put this movie out. And that was that right. was my whole thing. That was I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and like we said, the, the politics of that movie yeah. got and and here's the thing, and I'm gonna say this about Disney, I'm gonna say it about any studio that gets on camera and pats himself in the back for being progressive. I don't buy that you're sincerely being progressive. Mm-hmm. I buy that you're being insincerely progressive for the sake of good press. I don't right. think that Kathleen Kennedy is sincere. I don't think that anyone at Sony is fucking sincere. Um, I think anytime an executive gets on TV, I, I fucking hate it when the WWE does it because they are the most disingenuous bunch of fucks I've ever seen. Yeah. We'll get in front of a camera. A perfect, and- perfect example is like, oh, um, am I happy that Shang-Chi is being made? Yes. Do I think Disney's doing it because there needs to be more representation of like Asian actors? No, I think they saw Crazy Rich Asians and were like, oh, let's throw superheroes into that idea. We'll make yeah. yeah. Well, uh, also, hey, look how good look how good that Black Panther did for us. Let's I mean, try with an Asian market. Yes. Yes. I do, I, this, I do think it's an Asian this. market. Also, yeah, also China. Like, that's yes, exactly and China. what that is. I think yeah. China, I, yeah, I think you really nailed it. I think China being a, a country with over a billion people in it and a large growing film industry i think that has the most to do with it yeah. also but, um ike perlmutter was literally standing in front of anything led by a woman or not led by a white man and being like no true no. yeah no <laughs> for so, like seven years so and to, that end, would... to that end to have a reactionary push to him is completely understandable like if kevin foggy was like i want a Black Widow movie, I want a Black Panther movie, I want a Shang-Chi movie, but I've got this fucking right-wing ash, like, ass hat in my way all the time. I can understand yeah. a sudden influx of movies that are like that, where you're like, where it seems socially, politically motivated, but also mm-hmm. at the same time, like, if you're dealing with someone who just stands in your way all the time, because, like, I don't know, Kevin Feige probably likes all these characters and probably doesn't have yeah. any political oh, yeah. motivations. Um, I can well, see I that just, as being, I... like... Go ahead. I like yeah. the idea that they're doing this all because they're trying to kill Ike Perlmutter with the things that he exactly. was in control that, of. That too, yeah. I love that. But, um, but to get slowly to, deteriorating. Um, to get to this trailer, this felt um, one, like, it was very Force Awakens-y in a good way. Yes. In that yeah. it was like, and Red Letter Media said that in kind of a, a sarcastic, kind of cynical way, um, but those guys, as much as I like them, have been <clears throat> so beaten down by the fucking industry that like they I, I when they like something I'm surprised uh I don't watch half in the bag anymore because I know exactly what they're going to say about everything every time they review a film mm-hmm. uh uh but um to like to, to the plot of this movie and what's going on I think this is kind of perfect to if yeah. you're going to do if you're going to do yeah. a third ghostbusters movie and you no longer mm-hmm. have you know Harold Ramis around and the guys are old then I think you do something that has this kind of weird, almost somber tone um, and more yeah. about rediscovery and the fact that the trailer treats the Ghostbusters like gunmen who rolled into town and then rolled out of town is really interesting. And, yeah, the, fact that, and the fact that ghost activity was centered in New York alone 
is really and, interesting to me. And you know. then disappeared for 30 yeah. years. 30 years, yeah. And we're not and, even that bullshit that Ghostbusters 2 did, where it was like, oh, it was a light show, and burr, 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 discredited. And also, I like how much it's like, I like the idea of making um, Egon, the kind of like his family, the central characters, but he was yeah. very much not in the other movies. He's yeah. the third guy. Yeah. He's the smart guy. That and I, li- oh, I, I like yeah. the idea of my theory, and that Joe thinks it's the same thing, uh, or Sean, I think it's the same way, that we think that because, you know, you wrapped up Vigo, you got you caught Zul, you, you, you shut down Yuo Shandor's tower, like, you have this giant containment unit in the middle of New York that could go critical because mm. of because of people like Peck and because of politicians that, yeah, you take it out in the middle of the country and you bury it in the desert. Yeah, it's like what you do with nuclear waste. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea of, like, Paul Rudd, because, like, I think people thought that Paul Rudd was going to come in and be like, oh, he's the new fucking Peter Venkman, and he's not at all. He's like a science yeah. teacher who's like, you want to explain why some area that doesn't have a fault line and doesn't have any history of earthquakes is suddenly having tremors? Well, yeah. the the theory that's been bandied around about what's going on is that the uh, cult of Gozer was actually out in Oklahoma and Egon mm-hmm. was holding them at bay. Ooh. And because there's a scene in the trailer that you see the Shandor Mining Company. Shandor Mining Company. Yep, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, which which connects back to all of that, which if they're going to pay tribute to the original Ghostbusters that way and actually dive into some of the quote unquote, as ridiculous as it sounds, deep lore, I'm 100 percent for it. Here's the weird thing when you say that, like there is deep lore in Ghostbusters, but it's self-contained into one item in that universe. And it's Tobin's spirit guide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I agree with Red Letter Media in the sense that Evo Shandor's ghost might be the villain of this movie. Yeah. Okay, I could see that. Because he's probably pissed off at, like, these these four jack-offs, like, foiled a plan that was probably laid out centuries ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With a bunch yeah. of, like, with a bunch of, like, yeah. like nuclear-powered garbage that they stored on their back. <laughs> I think the most, the most exciting thing to me about this is that they're not trying to... They're not trying to recapture lightning in a bottle. They're no, just trying no. to make their own mixture. Um, well, there, my, it's like a lot of. I, uh, to me, I saw a lot of mixing of. Uh, but yeah, I was about to say, but it does look like they're trying to recapture a bunch of other stuff that kind of connects to some of the actors that are in the film. Yes. Um, they're kind of going for uh, a sort of Stranger what New Line is doing with the Conjuring and kind of Finn Wolfhard being in Stranger Things, kind of that vibe. Um, but. It, at the same time, it looks like it's a mix. I think doing a mix of other things is the best way to do it. I mean, famously, George Lucas was combining all of the Westerns that he loved as a kid. King Arthur. Uh, I can't remember what the actual movie is. Hidden Fortress. Um, yeah, and all the these other things. Movie. And all these things, and he was putting them together. It's like if each of us just took five random things from our childhood and just, like, mashed them into something. Um and that's kind of the feeling I'm getting from this, which is that Jason Jason Reitman, I can't remember. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, he's taking right. the things from his childhood that he loved, which were those other '80s. Um, uh, no, it's it's Ivan Reitman. Sorry, I, no, no, no. You're right. It's Jason. Yes, no, yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I also feel like it's, there's it's a something. there's a good yeah. Goonies vibe in it too. Yeah, there's like, a Goonies man, vibe. There's like a yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean. I th- sorry to interrupt. I'll, I just wanted to point out real no, quick. I, I think I was, was, um, okay. I think a, a lot of studios realize there's a a very strong market to try and gear things towards kids again to an extent, like or at least yeah. stuff that's a little bit more mature for kids. Like aim it towards the thirteen, fourteen year olds. Like it doesn't have to be for mm-hmm. six, seven year olds. Like there is a market out there of of kids who are going to the theaters because parents don't have time to bother with them. So well, and the thing is, and, and the thing, I'm going to go back to WB for a second. When they decided they wanted to gear their product towards children to get more sponsors on paper, that's a wonderful idea because right. you enable yourself to have more mainstream success. However, they did the thing that I hate when people gear a product towards children, which is immediately assume that every child 
is a brainless pile of flesh who will clap their hands at flashing lights. And yeah, who we're very suck- sync right now. <laughs> I was about to say something similar. Like it's it's also not assuming that kids are just dumb. Not assuming yeah, exactly. that they don't know what Thank they you. like. And you can do you can do a kids friendly movie that is kind of cerebral and kind of smart and kind of mature and doesn't insult the intelligence of the paying adults who are there to take their kids this movie yeah. like and that's the thing i've always said like it, you can make a kids movie that still makes adults feel like they're very much welcome yes. well, and that goes like, that goes back to some of exactly that goes back to some of the uh, ridiculous uh, insults bandied at this trailer which is like oh they're just trying to stranger things up ghostbusters and like you know what that's i'm okay with that like, I'm yeah. okay if that how, is the how template dare you, you want to use. How dare you take this extremely culturally relevant template and put it on this franchise that died 30 years ago and then came back and died again? Like, <laughs> and it's a template of a like it's a show that takes place in the 80s. Mm-hmm. That is yeah. like <laughs> that, right. that deals with very the, similar things. Like it it deals with shit from the other side trying to get in and people trying to stop it. Right. Regular well, ass blue collar people. And in the case of Jason Reitman, he said, he did say this back when they announced this movie that he had ideas about this years ago. Like he had ideas about this when he was watching the original Ghostbusters. Like mm-hmm. these are things that he was probably like telling his dad, well, if I made a Ghostbusters, this is what would happen. I wonder, um, I wonder. That's kind of nice. I kind of like that. I wonder um, if because the involvement of the cast and the writers with the video game, mm-hmm, if yeah. there is somehow a reference to it in this movie, which I would really appreciate because the move, yeah. the game is by and large considered to be Ghostbusters 3. Mm-hmm. Just because of like how it's made, who's in yeah. it. Like, the, and like even Bill Murray, who is the biggest cynic of all, had nothing but nice things to say about that game. And there's a great right. story where he was on, I think it was Conan O'Brien. And he said, like, yeah, I came in the studio and I was doing my lines. He says, and after I left, he's like, I was in the mood. He's like, I was sitting there. I was like, he's like, I was at a stop. And he's like, I was at a crosswalk. And I was like, and I said, I look over and there's a guy sitting there looking at me weirdly. He goes, dude, let it go. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. One of the other uh, the anecdotes about that was that Sigourney Weaver didn't know what was going on with it, and that's why she didn't come back because yeah. essentially her agent like misinformed yeah, her about what it, it was. Yeah. yeah, and then once she found out afterwards what it was, she was furious. Mm-hmm. She was so mad. Um, yeah. I wonder if she'll be back for this one too. Maybe. And I wonder. I I really wonder if because like Rick Moranis isn't like like he's hard retired. But I think yeah. there's stuff he's going to do. Well, no, uh, isn't he doing something recently? Well, I, I think yeah. he picks and chooses. I don't think he's. I, I remember he's... hearing him on the Nerdist, ha, um, of all places, um, and he said uh, he said something in effect of, "Well, everything people give me is crap. <laughs> Every everything that people offer me is just." Did he come bullshit. back to the game? No, he uh, came. He came back for. He did an episode of the Goldbergs as Dark Helmet. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> that's fantastic. That is the, uh, the newest thing since two thousand two thousand seven. Right. Yeah, which makes sense because that's a. I never watched all of it, but I remember it being a very well written show from the few episodes that I did see, um, and a very respectful show of whenever they do references to things. Yeah, the episode um, is literally called Spaceballs. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Did yeah? Did we uh, want to touch on either of these other trailers, Star Girl or uh, No Time to Die? Uh, um, we can talk about heard, Star Girl and Crisis. Probably. I've heard No Time to Die uh, looks fantastic, but I honestly haven't yeah. watched the trailer yet. Um, I, I here's my it. thing, and I think like I think Arlen's gonna understand where I'm coming from a lot here because like he is our resident like Bond dude. Um. Hmm. I have been sufficiently burned out on James Bond since I fell asleep during Quantum of Solace. Um, yeah, and I know I know that was a while ago, but also I think like you wasn't it you that said what, Skyfall or which one was the last one? What was the uh, Spectre's bad? So you said okay, Spectre's, yeah, you, yeah, you said Spectre Sky, was bad. Skyfall's awesome. But here's the thing: it doesn't matter with Bond because they're standalone films. That's the that's the major thing that's yeah. important is that. A Bond movie is a Bond movie, and you can dispense with them if they're bad, and you can enjoy well, them. And here's a, okay, but that's the weird thing, though, is that the Daniel Craig movie like sequels. 
they're um, that's a, that's the biggest yeah. problem with them is that they do try to have a continuity, but they don't want to commit to it at all. Yeah, like they, they I saw, tried to I, do that. So I saw Sean Connery of, too. Yeah, I saw bits of this the trailer. I know Blofeld returns in this trailer as a, he's in like a cell or something. Yes. Yeah, he's in his um, Magneto cage. Um, and, and like yeah. a, and Quantum of Solace is a direct follow up to Casino Royale, and it's a fucking piss poor follow up and movie to begin with. Um, yeah. um, and that honestly, that movie. I was like, I think I'm done with these for a while. And I think I watched yeah. the end of Skyfall uh, in the movie theater I was working at when it came out. Um, and I was like, this is really cool. Um, yeah. I think I called yes. the end like M and um, whatever, yes. uh, whatever. Skyfall is like a close the door, open a new door. Movie. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, who was, what was uh, Javier uh, Bardem's Javier. character's name? It's um I can never remember his greatest name. Bond villain of all time, but he's he's one of the best because <laughs> he's such a he's a throwback, but he's also doing his own thing. He he insinuates that he wants to have sex with James at one point. It's it's fucking great. I love it. It's the so one thing good. I saw in that movie that really like made me he think pulls he was his someone jawbone out. That's <laughs> what I was about to say is when he <laughs> removes the prosthetic because he bit down the cyanide tablet and it and it went wrong and it dissolved <sighs> his face. You make me want to watch Raul that movie. Silva. I know. I need you to. Should, do it. Yeah, you should watch it because it's so it's so good. But yeah, he's like, and I he, yeah, and like yeah. My, my dad raised me on James Bond. Like the watch I have that belonged to my grandpa. My grandpa only got because it looks like the James Bond watch. Like, mm-hmm. um, my dad fucking loves Ian Fleming, um, and raised me on like, uh, you only live twice, which is such a problematic movie. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's yeah. all of the Bond movies are that way. Yeah, like, some of them are the like, but some of them are much worse. Like Sean Connery, he gets prosthetics to look like a Japanese man in yeah. that film. Yeah, he gets uh, he does he fucking yellow face. Like he gets fucking he gets fake slanted eyebrows and a new hairline. Um, yeah. Like they t- and like, there's like three female sidekicks that all get murdered horribly in that movie or something. Well, that's um, like James Bond like uh, formula. You meet yeah, the first true. Bond girl, she gets killed. Yeah. Then you right. meet the second Bond girl who ends up helping him, and mm-hmm. then there's a third Bond girl who works for the villain. Isn't it? Isn't it? Goldfinger he, goes through two of them before you get to Pussy Galore. He because one gets covered in gold, and then the second one shows up, and Oddjob murders her offhandedly. Um, and then Pussy Galore is the the fucking Bond girl that movie. That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds correct. Yeah, because Oddjob throws his hat at her gingerly, and she just dies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, yeah. Okay, what was I about to say? Um, with no time to die, is, I think what you were saying about how they are trying to be sort of have a continuity—that's what's bothering me the most about this trailer. Is I didn't realize how dependent on Spectre it was going to be. Um, and I think Spectre is one of the—it's one of the worst Bond films ever made. Yeah. Like, can, I, can I ask what's so bad about it? It's oh so this is the main this is the main problem and it's something we've talked about before is it's so it's so trying to reference Skyfall that it sort of does a lot of Skyfall things over again um and it tries to like wow. relive all the good moments from Skyfall but it doesn't have it like it doesn't feel right it feels like they're trying to take a victory lap um in a very cloying and a just Annoying so this way. is gonna be this is gonna be an odd odd reference, but oddly timely for you. Um, it sounds like what Metal Gear Solid Two very sneakily did in reference to Metal Gear Solid One, which is something you don't find out until the end of the game. Yeah. So yeah, it, sounds, and this, yeah. this sounds like it's just going like, remember that from the last movie? Kind <laughs> of. Yeah. And uh, and we we talked about this once before. It's using the Black Riders music in The Hobbit after Lord of the oh, Rings no. has already come out. Oh, no. And exactly. And they they do that in Spectre. They oh, you mean, reuse you, mean, score. You, mean, you mean in The Hobbit when they reuse yes. the Black Riders yeah. music for a white orc, even though that music right. is specifically designed for the wraiths. <laughs> yes. And they literally, and they did the same thing both with the actual music, but just like in terms of like action scene design. Like they just tried to recreate some of the better um, sequences, set pieces, from Skyfall, set pieces, and put them in Spectre, and just expect that to do the job, and expect I was to. Go, say, like, I oh, see the same thing in this. 
I see the same thing in this trailer. There's like a a motorcycle jump. I'm like, that. didn't we see that like in the first movie? Yeah, there's parts of it where I'm like, are you really just trying to do this again? But then there are other aspects of it where I'm like, that's new. That's well, new. Old, that's, I have, I'm I actually have, playing I have, that he's old. I have a question. Like, how much longer can the James Bond formula as it stands sustain itself before people are like, I don't give a shit about this anymore? Uh, if this movie takes, that's it. I think that it is, it's, um, I think it's sort of an exponential formula Um, (laughs) in that the half-life is going down as it keeps on going and they have to reset more and more frequently. Like Skyfall, as much as I love it, it is a hard reset in the middle Mm -hmm. of a James Bond's existence. Um, Whereas Roger Moore, he never resets at all. Like, he's yeah, because isn't and like I haven't seen Skyfall, but like what I got, what I parsed in the tra- like suddenly he is like starting to lose it. Essentially, he's like they make it seem like he's been doing it for a long time, like mm-hmm. as if he's been doing it for forty, fifty years. But Casino Royale was supposed to be a hard reboot, mm-hmm. wasn't it? And the reason I'm okay with it in Skyfall is. That's the 50th anniversary. We've talked about this before yeah. also. When it's a 50th anniversary and when that's clear what you're going into it to do, it changes things. We talked about the Doctor Who 50th anniversary yes. before. No, I accept don't... a lot in that because it's an anniversary and it's supposed to be a celebration. Yeah. Um, and I just let things fly. And I did that. Yeah, like, I mean, like how, how nowhere in the course of, of Doctor Who history has he ever referenced the fact that like, oh yeah, I've met myself twice mm-hmm. in the well, same, in the same sitting. Arlen, exactly. don't forget about what the original plans for uh, the conclusion of Skyfall were going to be too, like when he went back to his exactly. family home and the groundskeeper was, wasn't was supposed to be Sean Connery, but they couldn't get him to come do well, it. Okay, so it goes even deeper than that. that it was supposed to be a retirement home. Yeah, for, for Bonds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, wasn't the implication was, and didn't they kind of softly lean into this that James Bond is a title given to 007 agents. It's something that they were definitely going to like. It was going to be like canon on screen, but they kind of went the other uh, way. In the movie. Because in the movie, you actually see his father's gravestone, and it's yeah. and his name is Andrew Bond. Okay. Um, so it kind of like it's kind of just like no, we're not doing that. Just sort of that, which I'm, makes I'm, sense. I'm really glad because like the more you try to build up the answer to the mystery like Mm -hmm. like oh you know how how are there 20 some odd movies and why isn't he ever properly age and you know are these connected it's like i think once you Mm -hmm. commit to that there's no going back yeah you kind of have to commit to the idea of a floating timeline like yeah in my head in between skyfall and casino royale some of those adventures from the older movies did happen a version of goldeneye happened yeah like how we said in logan you can reference (laughs) The Wolverine, you can reference Origins, exactly. and you can reference the other Exum movies, but they, you don't have to reference all of them in one breath, and you can choose what from which movie to apply to this one. And mm. that movie made it very clear what it was like. The 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 adamantium bullet, that happened. Yeah. But yeah. the rest of Origins may not have. Yeah, um, he went to Japan at some point, yeah, and he had adventures. Exactly. Yep. But he might not have fought a robot. <laughs> he might, he might yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely didn't because he totally had his uh, his metal claw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so do or we, like do how you... or how Go Evil ahead. Dead is like Evil Dead One is one movie, but then Evil Dead Two is like, oh no, the events of the first movie happened, but they happened differently. And they then happened Evil... a little differently, yeah. I yeah, mean, and then yeah. Army of Darkness is like, oh no, this is a sequel to Evil Dead Two with some minor retcons. And then the TV mm-hmm. show is like, all of it happened, but maybe not all of it happened. Yeah, so it happened a little bit differently and so it happened exactly the way you remember it so yeah, yeah exactly. exactly so do we want to hit up the uh, extras real quick the one story there and uh, uh-huh. wrap it up after that yeah my favorite joke that I've made all all week um, which is uh, <laughs> D&D directing uh, half of a good life <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, the okay, writers here's, are, here's uh, the thing of- I don't think they get even close to half of a good Lovecraft movie because Okay, I was very soft and very lenient on these two for a long time regarding Game mm-hmm. of Thrones because, like, all right, season five is like dumb, but season it's five garbage. is fun to me because it's got like 
the Suicide Squad episode where it's like seven of the most badass characters are like, we're going to go fight some ice zombies. I'm like, Are you that's mean season seven? seven? Or is it season, that's season seven? seven? That's season I, seven. Okay, yeah. Have, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, that's dumb, but I'll watch it because of the mm-hmm. memes and because of the entertainment value. However, logistically, it's fucking dumb. Um, mm-hmm. And I lost a lot of respect for these two assholes because there's a very suspicious timing of when they got a Star Wars opportunity and then season eight of that show is insultingly bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and then the Q&A happened and then they canceled Q&As because people were fucking roasting them because they seemingly inadvertently, because of their sheer incompetence and lack of self-awareness, got on stage and exposed themselves to fucking everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, kind of I'm... shocking how how that went for them because like they went on stage like, yeah, let's do a QA. And they got in this fucking stage like, oh yeah, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know why George let us adapt this. We want to take the magic out. We made it as we went along. Blah 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 blah. And like it's almost like just watching two guys like just dig their own fucking graves on stage. Yeah. Yeah, it's kinda kinda like that, yeah. Well, if if it's not that it's gonna make a huge difference because whatever with these guys, but um what they're doing isn't adapting a Lovecraft story, but the Vertigo comic Lovecraft, which supposes that <sighs> the world of H.P. Lovecraft actually was real. Let me see. I have the description here. The book focuses on the graphics, notably lurid dialogue-free sequences featuring Cthulhu and his tentacled can assaulting helpless humans, starting with H.P. Lovecraft's father, Winfield. This person seems like they're zealots, so I'm not going to go into that. Talking about how Cthulhu actually killed H.P. Lovecraft's father. Uh, he dies in an insane asylum in Lovecraft's native Providence, Rhode Island, though not before passing on the family copy of Abdul al Hazarad's Necronomicon to his young yeah. son. And mm-hmm. then it goes into just being like, well, is this reality or is this is this just his mental state and blah, blah, blah. So it's it could be interesting, but yeah. based on Here's... what these guys have admitted, yeah, no. No. Well, here's here's yeah. the thing. I think they would get a hold of this and immediately try to strip out the cosmic nature of it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and downplay it and make it like far too boring. much bo- like a boring psychological thriller. Like, is it real? Me? Um, Turn it also, into Lifetime movies. Also, I want to get it out there that one of them, I can't remember which one of them, isn't even a writer by trade. He is a personal assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, but the other one wrote novels, at least yeah. two. Yeah, before yeah but that doesn't that doesn't mean that it transfers over to the other guy. I, I know. I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm like, just saying. Like when you look at when you look at Trey Parker or Matt Stone, when you talk when people talk about them, you're like, oh, well, Trey Parker does everything, and Matt Stone is just there for the ride. But when you talk to them, like Trey is like, no, no, no. He's like, where I am weak, he is strong, and right. where you know he is, you know, and, and vice versa. He's like, it's never been. You know, it's not about one does more work. He's like, this has been very much equal lifting the mm-hmm. entire time. Even if it appears like Trey Parker is, I wouldn't say the brains, but like the one who kind of has more of like the intangible it, I would say. Well, if you watch that doc, you can like see it's like Trey is kind of like gets too cerebral. And then Matt's like funny guy that breaks it. Yeah, and then that helps. That's their entire writing process. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like D and D don't strike me as people who work very well together. Like they just kind of they, like I don't They're know. You, together, you, you want to fucking write a fucking TV show? Yeah, let's do it. What do you mm-hmm. got? Sure, that sounds great. Um, and the fact yeah. that like they admitted to making up as they went along, I would. I'm not surprised that Disney was like, "You did fucking what?" Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not doing Star Wars. Get the fuck out of here. Um, and then, like that, sh- I'm like that fucking show, that Civil War show they wanted to do with the with the South one. Oh, that well, shit. okay, I'm not going to defend them on that, but that wasn't their idea. Yeah, it wasn't. It was somebody else's idea. Yeah, to... but then I think I think after yeah. as Game of Thrones was going along, people were starting to see the cracks. They were like, "Yeah, you're not fucking doing. You will fuck this up in a heartbeat." Yeah. Also, that wasn't a. It wasn't a good idea. It was a, no. It was a very bad no. idea. No, it was but a bad people, idea. But people really made it sound like it was theirs, and I, that's not. 
that's not intellectual. That's also, an idea that's mostly already but already been done with Man in the High Castle. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, and like we, we, well, that like we revisit like what if Nazis won across various mediums. Like, fu- j- fucking the CW did it. Okay, mm-hmm. like. Well, um, also, there's there's a lot of differences. For one, I don't think we've actually recovered from the civil war in this country, no, even compared haven't. to the Germans. I would say not yeah. that they've completely recovered. If you no, but they the the, the, the Germans have done a very like they 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 do a they do hard work in terms of mm-hmm. trying to make yes. sure that like that doesn't happen again in that country yep. and like certain items and certain hand gestures and certain i think it's are there sayings i don't know if they're sayings but like things that are physical associated with the nazis are flat out fucking illegal yeah. and in this country we have lawmakers who are like oh the confederate flag is about states rights blah, 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 blah. Yeah, um, it's, it's a whole free what, speech what, conversation what what rights yeah, what, what rights, rights are you talking right, about but, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um and we we gal like there are, there are powerful people in this country who galvanize those kind of, those kind of people. So, um, but that's not that's not here nor there. Like, I, I I don't trust these two as far as I can throw them, and I really don't trust them with some yeah. of my favorite fiction on the planet. Yeah, I, I'm to the point where I'm like, I'm really excited for that spinoff uh, of Game that, of Thrones. That, that's, that's, been, that's that spinoff that fucking died and got canceled. Well, not that one because there's one that's written by the guy who was apparently like the third head of that show like i can't remember his name brian something um and apparently he's the reason that that show was as good as it was like everybody behind the scenes acknowledges that like he probably should have taken over in the end there and these two maybe should have left um which i i'm kind of like yeah maybe they should have maybe they should have let somebody else take the take the reins because they clearly didn't care in the end um, I cannot remember this dude's freaking name. Uh, yeah, um, and like, I these guys take shortcuts. Um, they they drop plot points. They forget character strengths. They forget uh, character traits. Um, they will uh, they have don't work with others. No, they don't help. help. No, and, and that's I think that's part of the problem with and Game of Thrones is that like they were allowed to do. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say they also hope that the audience forgets certain things that they never bother to answer. Dude, have you have you ever seen that? It's it's from I think like the Game of Thrones production footage, like docu- the behind the scenes stuff. Like the reason why one of the dragons was killed by uh, fucking that awful awful character and their their ballista. Yes. Yeah. Danny, Brian Danny, Cogman. That's his name. Brian Danny, Cogman. I Danny forgot about the Iron Fleet. Yes. That's the reason. Danny forgot. Danny, Danny forgot about. Yeah, I remember that. Brian, but yeah. yeah, Brian Cogman is who I was thinking of, and he wrote some of the best episodes of the whole show. I'm trying to find them here. Um, but he's he's apparently responsible for a lot of the character development in the show and making a lot of the sort of the best moments. Uh, cri- cripples, bastards, and broken things. I believe that's uh, that's the episode where Tyrion gives Bran his little uh, saddle that allows him to ride and do things oh, okay. upright. Um, uh, was was he behind Hard Home? Because that wouldn't shock me. Uh, he's. Uh, it looks like he does a lot of like. He does a lot of episodes well, that are wait, more. Neil, Neil Marshall. Neil Marshall directed Hard Home, didn't he? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's why like, that um, let's see, what am I thinking? Uh, Arius put to a test. Horse Tyrell is judged by the sparrows. Jamie and Braun face the sand snakes. So this is an episode from like season five or whatever, and it's one of the better ones that I that I can think of. Um, I'm trying to find a really good example. One that was him, Oathkeeper. Uh, let's see, what's that one? That is where uh, Joffrey melts down. The Stark sword and gives it to Jamie, isn't it? Or is I Jamie? Think it gets is. No, I think it's when Jamie gives the sword to Brienne. Okay, Oathkeeper is when John goes all to put down that rebellion of oh, okay. Black. Okay, so yeah, like he's this is a good. I think that's my point. He wrote some of the better episodes of this show, and he's and like I said, he was often called like the third guy in charge he's in charge of the game of or not the game of thrones the lord of the rings show that is coming uh he's the i believe he's the showrunner 
Um, so cold consulting producer, at least. And he was a showrunner of one of the spinoffs that they, um, so like, I'm more excited for what he's doing because apparently he was a big part of why the show was good in the first place. Um, cause I look, looking at those writer credits, most of his episodes are in the first four seasons, which is what the sort of half the movie will be good joke comes from the first four seasons of that show are great. And I think yeah. that that was collaboration. That yeah. was a, a team of writers and good directors and good choices. And also having the books and George heavily involved at that point in time. Um, and it's very clear, like, as those things went away, as their relationship with George sort of deteriorated, the show kind of got worse. They came back really strong for season six. Um but that's because they were covering a lot of the stuff that George told them was going to happen. Um, and the stuff where he had the most detail and probably where the book was the most written at that point. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's whatever. I don't really care, but I know that a lot of people have been talking. So it's whatever. I, yeah, I, I'm not excited for them to do. Honestly, I don't want them working in show business anymore. <laughs> I don't want them any. Um, like, I like. I don't think on it. It's like the first group of writers or like creators where I'm like, you don't deserve the success you have, and I think you should leave. I'm never. I'm never willing to say. <laughs> I'm always willing um, to give. And they they take you wrong. You're, um, you're cutting that really bad for me. I don't know if it's anybody else. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, I think, what did I say? Just, I'm always willing to, like, <laughs> let, I'm willing to give people a chance to sort of prove themselves over, I guess. Like a, I don't know, like a, an apology. Nope, sure. I lost all of that. I heard an apology, so. Apology? Apology. Um, I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, people we should probably wrap here. it up. Apparently. I think that's the right. universe trying to tell us. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, so I'll do I'll I'll plug some movie dumpster stuff real fast. Uh Trash into the Snow is going on right now. We just banged out Prancer. That is a misery tour of a Christmas movie, let me fucking tell you. That is ninety nine percent blue collar misery and sunken eyed, uh sad looking, like Innsmouth looking adults who all have gaunt faces and all have some kind of secret tragic backstory. Um, I remember that movie being much more optimistic when I was little, but maybe that's because my childhood sucked. Um, yeah, that was a bad film. I watched it. <laughs> it's, it, it is, it is misery, misery, misery till the final shot of the film. And then it just, it's like, look, Christmas magic that we didn't earn. Um, mm -hmm. It's fucking bad um and we're moving on to elves next which i didn't like either <laughs> uh so look Jesus. forward to that we've got a couple we've got i think we've got julie coming on again for another episode this year which i had i'm very excited for because when she brought on that hallmark movie last year um that was a fucking trip and that episode is one of my favorites because she is genuinely hilarious so um hopefully she comes back on for that one i can't remember what else we're doing though for this month i'll have to look back i'm also very tired um, but yeah, Blood Rage is out. We did that for Thanksgiving. Terminator Salvation's out. We did that for the first half of Thanksgiving, um, uh, for the first half of November. Uh, we're going to bang out Christmas and then take a little break. And then I think we're coming in with, uh, oh shit. I also forgot. I think I forgot what we we're going to lead the, th the next season with. Cause last year, remember it was Lawnmower Man and we made a big deal with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to, uh, I want to watch the sequel to that movie next season. <laughs> oh God. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, we've uh, I think we got another contest going on. Joe has made um, uh, movie dumpster uh, Christmas balls that have uh, green tape guts uh, inside of them. <laughs> uh, I think you can win those if you enter the little contest. Uh, uh, of course, I'm getting one for because I'm on the show. Uh, but yeah, we, you can enter it just the same way we did for the Halloween contest. You will have a hidden message in one of the episodes. You send us the message in a DM and you're entered into the contest. So yeah. Uh, so come join us for that stuff, and that's really all I gotta say about Movie Dumpster for now. Yeah.
Um, I don't got no plugs. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it for me, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Support the tall boy adoption fund where, yes. where you allow tall boys to, <laughs> to we'll match every donation living. because of his two brains, uh, and two hearts that he has. Um, I'm Eric Fedorchek. You can find me at Instagram at Eric underscore Fedor, uh, pictures of dogs and cats and food and comics. I'm also around the Phantom Zone, uh, Phantom Zone thing, place. And hey, if you're going to join, don't just have one fucking friend and answer the questions because that's confusing and dumb. Don't, don't, don't blatantly be a bot or someone trying to play their own shit. Or a troll. And, uh, also, I just recently watched uh, It Chapter 2, and I was just thinking about when Pennywise takes his You know, Lou hasn't even got to get to <laughs> You're already doing this. Yeah, I'm too tired, so I'll just say, if you're listening to this, listen to the other shows. Rate, review, tell a friend. Or go, just go fuck yourself. I don't care. Smash, smash that like button. Hey, Hunter also, is here. <laughs> also, go follow Young Kame on Instagram. Uh, yes. Y-U-N-G. Uh, uh, underscore K A M E. Uh, Hunter will love it if you follow him yes. on Instagram. I swear Please to say God. something to him. Stealing my bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of our bits now. Um, yeah. Yeah. The uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is that I just found out echidnas have four heads. To ah! <laughs> At this point, like I'm barely phased by it. It's just like I almost I'm just expected to be let down. I'm just, just... hoping the noise will block him. I imagine it's like a sprinkler, like a you no, no, we're done. No. That's all. No. Bye.